In this question, we have to determine whether this sequence converges or diverges. And if it converges, we have to find the limit. So there's a couple ways um, to do this problem. Uh, method one is to look at it and write the answer down. Um, that is the best method. <laughs> um, so to do that, you just have to notice that the numerator is always between negative one and one because the sine of n is always between these two numbers. If you think about the graph of sine x, it's a wave function, and the maximum value of the sine is 1, and the minimum value um, is negative 1. So it's always trapped between these two numbers. As n approaches infinity, the bottom is getting really, really big. So when we take the limit, you know, the top is just going to oscillate between negative 1 and 1. The bottom is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So this fraction is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, so the limit is zero. So that would be the answer. Um, the other way to do it is to show some work, which I don't really think is necessary, um, unless like you're taking a class and like work is required. Um, basically, you can use the squeeze theorem. So you start by writing down that the sine of n is less than or equal to 1 and greater or equal to negative 1. And then you have to make your inequality look like your sequence. So you just divide everything by n. And now you just take the limit of each piece. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of negative 1 over n. That's equal to 0. And we have the limit here as n approaches infinity of 1 over n. That's equal to 0. So because uh, both of these limits here are 0, and this is trapped in the middle, uh, whatever is in the middle is also 0. So the limit as n goes to infinity of sine n over n is equal to 0. And this is by something called the squeeze theorem. So by the squeeze theorem, something you usually learn like in a calculus 1 class maybe. Um, so yeah, so it's an optional way of showing work. If you decided you wanted to show work, you could use the squeeze theorem. This always works, by the way, squeeze, when you have like a cosine and a sine divided by like n to some power. You can always use the squeeze theorem to basically prove, right? This is a proof, a rough proof, uh, to prove that uh, it's equal to zero. Or you can just look at it and say, hey, you know, sine is between negative one and one. So when n gets really big, um, you know, no issues, it's just going to approach zero. Yeah, that's it.